Thanks, old girl. Hello, Rick Fun Reviews here, and it's finally here. The new and improved Fun Reviews Season 3 Part 2. Now, this new format will continue throughout Series 3 and 4, and maybe 5. I don't know yet. It depends on whether or not I have some creative, amazing creative ideas for Series 5. Now, this is only a test version of series th of um, series 4, I will be improving it, finalising some of the details for when series 4 finally airs. Can't wait for that. Now, this review's been a long time coming, so I'm not going to waste any time. Let's jump right in to NAC 2 with the story. So, the story. For those of you that don't remember, NAC 1 was one of the first games I ever reviewed on Fun Reviews. Back in season one. Now, oh my god, that feels like so long ago. Um, now, NAC 1's main flaw was that it was too short and repetitive. NAC 2 is extremely long and repetitive. <sighs> NAC 2 has fixed one of the issues from NAC 1, but has kept all of the other ones, only it's an extremely long game, clocking at 11 hours. It's 11 hours with... Repet with a repetitive plot, cliched writing, boring characters, Lucas, who was actually quite likeable in the first game, has become so moody and groany and just so unlikable. Unlikable. I honestly wanted to see him die towards the end. The only character who's half decent is Knack. Knack. The writing, it's alright. The character motivations, so-so. But... Overall, the story is way too long for its own good. It's a relatively simple story about Knack trying to fight these creatures, these robots called Titans who have been dormant for centuries and are starting to wake up because of this evil guy named Xander who were, who tricks them into thinking that um, he's a good guy but he's a bad guy. Basically a cliched story that I've seen in The Flash about three or four times now. Now, but the story itself should have been six, seven hours max, not eleven. Not 11, and just, it suffers from a similar flaw to the absolutely amazing game Alien Isolation. Every time you think it's going to end, it keeps on going. I was literally screaming for the game to end, to the point where when it actually did end, I didn't believe it actually ended until I saw the credits. Credits. And that is not a good thing in a game. A game should have its own self-contained story, which the knack definitely does have without any microtransactions and I'm really glad that they do that but it shouldn't run to the extent that it did it was way too long way too repetitive and just overall quite a boring game that the only reason I pushed myself to finish it was because I wanted to is because I wanted to review it now the price is actually really good coming in at only 25 pounds which for games these days, given the fact they're coming to 80, 60, hundreds of pounds now, it's a good thing to have a nice cheap game every now and again, but that doesn't mean you should stretch a relatively simple story out to the extent that it did. Now, let's talk about the presentation. Now, the presentation is the one area of that I can safely guarantee has been improved. The actual presentation itself is really well put together. The cartoony style really lends to the cartoony nature of the world. The complete utter lack of blood and gore in any way, shape or form really allows for kids to be able to get into video games because the gaming industry has sort of become way more adult oriented, oriented from its kid friendly roots back in the NES and Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. But that doesn't mean their graphics still aren't great. The relics as they fly onto NAC are really well put together. The different character models are really, really amazing. The actual cartoony style, it, there's no glit, there's very few glitches, very few issues, except for one time I walked into a solid brick, solid door and phased straight through. Maybe I, maybe I became a speedster. Maybe I became a speedster for a nanosecond. But the actual character models themselves are really great. The lip syncing is spot on. Knack himself is really well put together. The different stages of his growth are all different and unique from baby Knack to teenage Knack to adult Knack to giant Knack. Knack, they're all really great. The character models, they look like they've aged since the last game. And it's all been really well put together. Now, one main flaw. Xander. I'm not particularly fond of his character model in general. It looks weird. 
just, it looks like he's glistening almost. Almost in every scene he's in. But that's all for the presentation. Let's move on to the gameplay. So the gameplay. A game can have an amazing story, brilliant presentation, but it is truly defined by its gameplay. Now, Knack has an alright story, repetitive, long, tedious, and frankly, unlikable characters. The presentation is okay, but does it have that gameplay to match it up? Yes and no. Yes, it has got new features added, like a skill tree, skill tree leveling up system, and improved health bar, which allows you to regenerate your health as well as reattach. But, the gameplay still suffers with a lot of the same flaws as its predecessor did, such as um, such as the one hit kill when you're in small funk mode and other flaws which were in the first game. game. But, with those added, added functions, it allows for a deeper level of customization in the gameplay. Now, that above all is good because I honestly like to have my games where I can customize what my character is. For some reason, I still hate Skyrim. So, let's move on to the crux of the game. The cherry on top, the final level. So, you've done it. You've suffered through 11 hours of boring... T of... boring story that, frankly, you couldn't care less about. It's time to take on Xander for one final time. So, we find out that Xander has been building this enormous machine, which is called the Armageddon Machine. Machine. Um, and is planning to kill your best friends. And it's up to you to stop him. But not really. Once that's done, you've got to fight a relic monster. A relic monster, which is a correlation of so many relics that have just formed this weird, bleh, rambling tornado monster. They basically copy the Sandman boss from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. And once you've done that, it's a happy ending. And I really don't care about what happens to these characters, and I really hope there's not a sequel. Now, let's talk about my final opinions. NAC 2 has a lot, had a lot of potential. That's the key word, potential. It had the potential to have a good story, if it wasn't so long and drawn out. The potential to have good, good presentation, which it managed to achieve. The potential to have good gameplay if I had to fix all of the issues. And a good final boss if they had stuck to the Titan boss at the end. Um, now, that I'm going to give Knack 2 a 5 out of 10. It is average at best. Now, if you guys want to suffer through 11 hours of tedium, go ahead and buy it. It's only £25. But if you didn't like the first game and hate it and don't think the sequel looks pretty good, don't buy it you will be bored out of your mind. And that's all for this episode of Fun Reviews. I really hope you enjoy it, as well as enjoy this new format. And I'll see you guys for the next review, which will be on Assassin's Creed Origins. Bye! What? Are we rolling or something? Oh, it's an outro, right. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy it, click here to check out more of my videos. Click here to watch the current season season of fun reviews and click here to check out the complete series and i'll see you guys next time bye bye